Hello, this is Tov from Trifo Productions with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can create uh, fabric materials for your models in Blender by using the Simply Material add-on. It works pretty well. I'm using the uh, first version of it, but the steps for it are still the same. But once again, it's not an add-on that's free. You have to pay for it. Uh, but for the price, it's the, there's like three different categories when it comes to the packages that it uh, offers. I'm using the light version um, that comes with less uh, material options than the medium or the full. The full version has all the options in terms of the packages when it comes to the fabric styles, which is quite a bit. But the light version works pretty well, too. It has a lot of good options there, too. Now I'm using uh, Blender 4.0, and it seems to only work in 4.0 only. Other versions of Blender, I've tried to install it in, it, it doesn't work. But in 4.0, it does, which is great. Now I'm going to walk you through the whole process when it comes to importing a model into Blender or into 4.0 actually from 2.92. The reason I'm doing that is because you can apply those textures that you export from the add-on into any 3D package, let's say 3ds Max or Maya or uh, Cinema 4D, whatever package you use, it can be applied. This, these steps can be applied to those too. And the key thing is your model needs to be UV unwrapped. That's the key thing. Now I've already uh, set up a uh, model here in 2.9 to using the human generator. And we're going to export these pants and change the texture of, of these pants. Now we have to left click on the pants to highlight them. And go to File, Export, Wavefront Object. Now I've already created a, a folder for this. I already labeled it or put pants in it as the category or the name of the model. And make sure when you export anything out of Blender, click Selection Only. That way you don't export the whole scene. Just you want that only that specific part of the model to be exported so just make sure you check the box and click on export object and that's done let's minimize this now we're going to go to that folder make sure it's there so we have pants there mtl and pants obj you export only dot obj not mtl this doesn't work only obj does now with 4.0 opened and once again, I'll leave a link below this video so you can download yourselves and check it out. And this lesson process, you know, it's still the same process. Go to Edit, uh, Preferences, Install, uh, Navigate to where you've downloaded onto your system. Click on that. Click on Install Add-on. And then once that's been installed in Blender, let's type in Simply. Put a check in the box and it's activated. And it's on the right hand side, which is the toolbar of Blender of the UI and click on simply add-ons. This should be simply material, but simply add-ons because simply is a series that the creator has done. The simply material, the simply um, simply mesh and so on and so forth. He has a whole like three or four of them named simply so on and so forth, but they all work pretty well. And here's the add-on itself. Initially, it looks pretty simple, but once you start adding, uh, building up your material, it'll give you more options to work with. Now I'll left click to make sure this cube is selected and press delete on our keyboard. Go to file, import, because we're going to import that pants model into Blender. And click on, let me see, we have front object. And we're going to left click because uh, the address is still in copied into our, um, I don't know it's copied it. Let's go to our, our folder here, left click in there. Right click, copy, then with this whole section selected, highlight all that, press control V on our keyboard, enter, and those are our pants. Left click on that, import wave front object, and there are our pants. Let's press one on our keyboard, scroll up on our mouse wheel, left click and drag on the hand, gets mode three position, our pants here. And let's go to EV. Now the textures that we can create using the simply material add-on, they they can be rendered in EV and in cycles, but some of the options that it offers only works in cycles. But we'll keep it in EV just for the sake of this tutorial, just to kind of speed it up. 
Uh, but let's change our worldview here. And let's left click on our world tab there. Left click on the color tab. And take our color higher and change to like a sky. I'm going to change it to like a sky blue color. That's what I like to work with. And we have our pants. With our pants, like to left click to make sure they're selected. The first thing we're going to have to do is click on Create Simply. And once that's done, that gives us this generic pattern on the pants. To make it look like cloth. Uh, next thing we have to do is click on this button here. This is going to create the other layers for us, which would be the base texture, the micro texture, overlay texture, and additional uh, options for creating textures or adjusting the textures. So left click on that button and it gives us all those categories. Now, when it comes to the add-on itself, it comes with, like I mentioned before, uh, pretty much like texture presets that we can use to apply to uh, our pants here. So we're gonna click on this folder, and this, this is what it has to offer. Let's click on the tiger pattern. Left click on that and accept, and it applies this to our pants model. Now we have options here. Let's drag this over, left click and drag it over to adjust the scale. As we adjust the scale, you see it changes. Uh, we can increase, actually we can only decrease the tensity. We can also increase it, but it kind of makes the, the pattern kind of fade. Let's keep it at one, it looks best at one. Now you can uh, use custom textures, but let's just leave that alone for right now, just, just in general. Now we've added our base texture. You can toggle on the texture, actually all of these tabs, toggle them on and off by clicking on the eye icon. Left click, that turns it on, off. Left click, that turns it back on. Now the micro texture, that's one thing I like about this add-on. It covers, it pays attention to detail because you have your base texture, micro texture, and your overlay texture, and additional textures also. So we're gonna do, work with the micro texture so let's click on that folder again. And we're going to kind of scroll through. And the micro texture, you, when it comes to that, you want to think of myself, I think of like the wrinkles, the small wrinkles in clothing. And so I would probably click on this one to apply that. Let's accept. Now you really can't see it, uh, so to speak. Even when you toggle off the base texture, this is the texture that the pants came with. So you really can't see the micro texture. You can increase the scale of it or decrease the scale and, and increase it and decrease intensity. But when we go to the overlay texture, that's when you'll start seeing a difference in the wrinkles in the pants. So once again, click on that folder and let's go down to another kind of wrinkly texture we can use. Let's left click on that one, click on accept. And now when we toggle off the base texture, now you can see the wrinkle of the micro texture coupled with the overlay texture. You can see that in the model itself, which looks great. So that adds more realism to the overall appearance of our pants here. Now you can change the color of your pants, the roughness, normals, alpha, so on and so forth. Um, Let's, let's change the color a little bit just to get a little bit creative with what we can do when it comes to adjusting the colors. So click on colors and then click on, click on color ramp. Now it turns it to black and white, which is what the is represented on the color ramp. Now we have our black uh, side selected. Left click in there and make this a little bit lighter by clicking there. And we can turn this to like a bluish color. Click on this other point here, which is white. Left click there. Let's change it to like a green color or a reddish color or yellow. That looks good. And that applies that to our pants. You can adjust the colors there. So you don't have to, you don't have to stick with the colors that the default um, or the preset texture comes in. You can change those here. Um, you can change the color of the micro color ramp to and then the overlay color uh, ramp also, but uh, we don't need to really touch those. Now, uh, we can actually go to extra shading. This is where the like really big changes happen here. Click on extra. Right now it's an EV. So like I said before, some of them only work in cycles, like the wearing only is in cycles, velvet only in cycles, and so on and so forth. 
So we're going to change it from EV to cycles. And it's going to automatically adjust our rendering options for us, which is great. Now you can click on dirt and it applies dirt. So you can't really see it until you increase the intensity. So it's going to drag this up here. And now you can see the dirt. And once again, on the color ramp, you can change the color. So right now the black is selected. Left click in the uh, color tab there. Let's make this a little bit lighter and make it a little bit brownish too. That's on the uh, the darker end of the color ramp. You can click on the lighter end. Left click in there and turn it to like maybe a reddish color or pinkish color. That looks great. You can apply glitter. And the tearing is, is really cool too. So let's left click on the tearing part. And here's where the uh, kind of the almost the VFX happens, so to speak. If we increase our intensity here, look at what happens to the pants. It starts to tear, so to speak. You can those certain spots become certain spots become transparent, which is pretty nice. And you can, let me see, you can increase the, or have more settings to work with when it comes to the tears by clicking on the procedural settings, left click on there, and it gives you more options to work with. Increase or decrease the tearing scale by adjusting that parameter there, just cool. Uh, the fiber intensity, because you know that when, we, when you tear cloth, there are these little straggly parts that hang off from the cloth. So you're gonna increase and decrease that too. Uh, the fringe, um, intensity, you can increase that also. So you can have a lot of, uh, you can play around with a lot of the settings, which is cool. Another cool thing that this has to offer is the hair and fuzzles. Now, when it comes to exporting, um, exporting the hair and fuzzles, um, I haven't found a way to export it when you export it with a texture, but I just wanted you guys to see what it looks like. So when we, when we click on the hair and fuzzles to activate that, it will have those options beneath the tearing here, which is at the, let me see. Oh, here it is. I don't know, for some reason it puts it in the middle, which is kind of strange, but that's what it does. And even though we've activated it, you can't see anything yet. So click on create hair fuzzles, click on that. And you still can't see much, but you see the uh, collection of fuzzle or fuzzies right there. Is it fuzzle? Did they write fuzzle? Or the titled fuzzle? Oh, fuzzle. Uh, they're actually fuzzies, but it is what it is. Tomatoes, tomatoes. And to increase or to actually see the fuzziness, you just increase the uh, scale here. It's at one now, but when you increase it, Look what happens. Now, you, if you zoom in, it's just little white strands of hair. You see that? That is really, really cool. So when you have like a sweater that's fuzzy or pants that are fuzzy, you can just add that to uh, your pants and it, it, makes, it adds to the realism. So now that we've done all that, let's export this. I'll see you guys so I can bake it and export it. So I'm gonna scroll up. And we're going to go to export texture. So let's left click on that. And once we've left clicked on it, once we have to scroll down to see what the options are, here they are right here. That's, that's one thing that kind of bothers me with uh, this add-on. When you activate certain parts of it, it doesn't place it in order. It kind of like, almost like it haphazardly places the options here or the parameters, which is, is a little bit somewhat frustrating, but it's all good. Now you have to select where you want to uh, export your textures. Now I've already created this folder here, but uh, let me left click in there, right click, copy, and we're going to let's let's let me create another folder in here. So I'm gonna click click on new and type in textures. Enter. And then double click in here. And I'm going to left click, right click, copy. And then click on this folder. This, this is where we're going to send our textures to. 
I left click control V to paste it enter and click on accept and that's where our, our textures for our pants will go and now we can uh, increase we can change the parameters here the higher the uh, resolution the more the clearer it'll be when it comes to the textures but the color depth let's turn it to 16 keep it at PNG because we want to keep that transparency happening when it comes to the tears if you go to try to choose any other options here like JPEG you, you'll lose the transparency transparency option of the texture uh, I think the width and the height of the textures for this tutorial is, is, is fine and what you have to do also click you have to choose the uh, textures you want to export by clicking on any of these so base color uh, let me see the normal also because we want to keep those textures without having to add more geometry to our model and the alpha and there's a uh, warning here please enter texture name let's click in here and type in pants texture enter and then once you have oh and then click on our object because it says please select object to export textures so I'm going to click on that once the object is selected click on bake selected textures and hopefully this won't take too long we only chosen three maps here hopefully it won't crash either if this takes too long I'll stop video and we'll come back to it when it's uh, finished exporting the baked textures and I'll be right back and we're back uh, the exported the textures. let's look in the folder where those textures are change the view here and this exported the alpha the base color and the normal which is all we need for at the at this point and let's uh, close this out don't save and we're going to open up the other folder where we have the pants here for our character let's turn this to cycles this is where we this is where we exported it in turn this from CPU to GPU and let me see any other see agile viewport this is a different add-on that I'll probably showcase later on but once we have that done let's let's uh, divide our window up let's left click and drag and let's turn this to cycles and we're going to apply those textures that we just created in the simply material add-on we're going to apply that to these pants here let's scroll up on our mouse wheel left click and drag on the hand gets mode to reposition our window and we're going to turn this window to the shader editor uh, left click on this icon here turn it to shader editor and these are all the uh, nodes that are being used to create these pants but we're going to left click let's hold down B or press B left click and drag over this set of nodes here and then press delete on our keyboard we want to start from a new set of uh, textures to apply. So left click on this node and press Control T to activate the node wrangler. And once again, if you can press Control T, nothing happens. Just go to Edit, Preferences, click in there, type in Node. And then when you see Node Wrangler, put a check in the box and that activates it because that's a really helpful um, add on that comes with Blender. It helps you set up nodes without having without you having to do it yourself. So I'm going to click on open, and we're going to open up our folder here. Left click again, right click, copy, minimize. Left click, Control V, enter. We want to apply the base texture first. Left click on that and click on open image. And let's give it yeah. And there's our image there. We have our textured pants there, which is what we want. And now we're going to add um, the normal map to get the wrinkles there. So we're going to, uh, let me see, let's left click and drag to just select these three nodes here. Left click and drag. Press G to move these over. And then press Shift to D to copy these and pull these down. And then press Shift A on our keyboard and go to Vector. 
and click on normal map. And there we go with that. And then we want to click on this folder. And then this will always, this was already still inside of the uh, options when it comes to choosing our folders. Let's click on our normal map, click on open image. And we just want to use the uh, normal map as normal map, not as a color map. So when color space, turn this from sRGB, left click on that and change this to non-color data or non-color. And then we're going to left click and hold, left click and drag color to color. And then let's pull this uh, principal BSD F node over a little bit. And also the output node over, give us a little bit more space to work with. And we're going to connect the normal map from here to the normal map of the BSDF. And that applies the, the wrinkles to our clothing. But the key thing we want to do is apply the uh, holes or the tears to our pants. And that's the same process too. Uh, left click and drag on these sub nodes and press G to pull these up, give us some more space to work with. Then press Shift D. You want to copy that and pull that down. And I want to click on our folder again. Left click on the folder. And then click on Alpha Pants. Left click on that. Open image. And then what we're going to do is left click and drag from the alpha of the um, of this node system or this node itself. Left click and drag this to the alpha of the PSDF node. And then watch what happens. Now we have our holes in our pants. Yeah, and that's how you can use the Simply Material add-on, how you can adjust textures and apply textures and adjust the colors and apply tears into them, into the model, and then export it, uh, bake it, export it, and then apply it as a texture in another version of Blender, or as I said before, 3ds Max or Maya, or any other 3D package that you use. And that's today's Blender Quick Tip, the process from beginning to end of how to use the Simply Material add-on. And uh, hopefully uh, you've you know gained some knowledge from watching the tutorial, and I'm, I'm glad you guys have watched it. Once again, I appreciate you guys. really thank you guys for watching the, the tutorials, and hopefully this has been helping you. Once again, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.